Now, Zoom and AI is where the first installment of our reimagined tech check starts today. Deirdre Bosa is in San Francisco. D, I got to know what you thought of Kathy's comments. And I know you always keep us honest on things like stock based comp. Yeah, we're going to get to that. And by the way, guys, I'm excited to debut this new version of Tech Check. We're going to keep bringing you the biggest stories and themes in tech throughout the day. Now, Kathy Wood spoke to you guys about market dislocation. She said that about five times. And when it comes to tech, that is really the big question as we start off on this Monday morning, quality versus unprofitable, value versus growth. So big task for some of those names in the latter group that comes tonight in the form of Zoom. Classic case here of a product that got its clock cleaned by Microsoft Teams, Google Suite, that dreaded bundle we talk about so often. It's DocuSign as well. It's Twilio and even Slack bought by Salesforce, which reports on Wednesday, by the way. One note this morning says that investors are pondering a Slack spinoff or even a Tableau spinoff. That's another buzzy software name that Benioff picked up in 2019 that may or may not be living up to its promise for investors and has the activists circling. Those questions are going to come up in the next week with a lot of these names reporting. How much, Deirdre, have, have investor expectations been reset around some of these stay-at-home COVID winners that have all, you know, given back a lot of business and now had to adjust completely on their cost structure? Well, they were reset last year. Remember, they had these huge valuation run-ups during the pandemic, and then they came back down to earth. But this year has been really remarkable because a lot of these names, unprofitable um, specifically, have seen these huge run-ups. Like Zoom is up about 10%. So are we going to get the fundamentals to justify that? The big theme, of course, is now profitable growth. And Zoom is one of the pandemic darlings that were able to manage to achieve net income during the pandemic. But the quality is what investors may be looking at next. Carl, you mentioned stock-based compensation. What does that do to Zoom earnings? Yeah, it gets the EPS a little bit higher. But when you strip it out, it's something like 13 or 15 cents, 13 cents gap. So it's not enough for these companies to say that they're profitable. I think that investors are going to start to look at the quality of those profits when everyone now in tech is doing these cuts, layoffs, um, more efficiency. Um, meanwhile, guys, AI also continues to be a core story. You guys talked about that with Kathy Wood as well and how it plays into her software picks. She mentioned this with Zoom. Um, the street, though, increasingly looking beyond Microsoft, Google, and software names uh, to capitalize on this. They're actually looking under the hood, a bottoms-up approach at something like computing power. So Bernstein, Stacey Rasgon, he tried to size the chat GPT opportunity for NVIDIA. He estimates that it could plausibly be in the multiples, tens of billions of dollars once generative AI reaches scale. Scale defined as about 10% of Google's typical search volume. Now, NVIDIA, speaking of these tech darlings, it's another one of those that was beaten down in 22 and seeing a huge rebound this year. But unlike Zoom and some of the others, here's the case, Sarah and Carl, for how the fundamentals could keep it, could keep it going. So even though it had this huge run up already on earnings on the AI story, you're saying a lot more to come. Well, and that's According what Bernstein did. Yeah, exactly. They looked at its total addressable market. Remember, that was all the rage when a lot of um, these tech companies were going public over the last few years. What is that, Tam? But investors have put that to the side to focus on that cost cutting. But for NVIDIA, the story here is less cost cutting, more about that potential opportunity, a bigger total addressable market, or we'll put it good old top line growth. For the rest of tech, though, guys, still layoffs on the bottom line. So over the weekend, we heard about more cuts at Twitter and reports that there will be more cuts over at Meta. So it's this push and pull. Cost cutting has worked so far for tech stocks this year. They were able to regain market leadership. But now investors, they could start to ask, what sustains that comeback? Does it come from more cuts, more layoffs? Buy side, definitely talking about more workforce reductions and not being over. Or does it come to from a transition back to top line growth? And that could come from a lot of places, guys, that you're talking about uh, throughout the morning. Macro via soft landing, recurring software revenue, consumer rebound in China. So a more focused, efficient workforce could position these tech companies like Meta, Twitter to take advantage or could cut too much and leave them too lean to capitalize on some of those better macro and fundamentals. It's pretty amazing how quickly the conversation shifted from crypto chips and gaming, uh, the channel and gaming, to now this new supposedly generational opportunity in, in AI. In, in AI. Yeah. But what I yeah, will absolutely. say is that you hear CEOs talk about AI differently than, say, some of these other... Tra I mean, it's, it's hard to separate, right, the noise from what's real, but on AI, a lot of them are really investing in this. And, and I keep thinking of Roloff Botha, who told us at Sequoia, we're at the early stages. Yeah. It's not even overhyped yet.